Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice questions found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton Bourne, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you were one of my private tutoring students. This problem can be found at the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson one of the biology two module. Be sure to hit pause and work through this problem on your own before watching my explanation. Now, to really ace this question, we're gonna have to understand a little bit about the human immune system. One of the key players in the immune system is B cells. These nice little B cells I've drawn here. And something that's cool about B cells is that B cells have proteins on the surface of the cell called antibodies. Here's a blown up version of an antibody here. Each of these antibodies has something called an antigen binding region, these orange and yellow bits that I've circled. Now, in the bone marrow, when a B cell replicates, it's going to create lots of daughter cells. And because the DNA gets shuffled, this antigen binding region is going to be different on each antibody that's produced. So each B cell is going to have a different antigen binding region at the end of its antibodies. Eventually, these different B cells get transported to the lymph nodes. And in the lymph nodes, when an antigen shows up that binds well to a certain antigen binding region, that specific B cell gets triggered to replicate. When this happens in the lymph node, the DNA isn't shuffled as it is in the bone marrow. And so each of these antibodies binds to the same antigen when this replication happens, and that's what allows us to fight that antigen so well. Now let's get back to the question and see how this helps us solve it. All right, so this question tells us a little bit about the structure of antibodies, and then it jumps right into it, and it asks us what allows for variable antigen specificity. In other words, how can we have antibodies that bind to so many different antigens? How can we have so many different antibodies that match to so many different bacteria, viruses, etc.? Well, let's look at our answer options. First off, B cell proliferation. And we talked a little bit about B cell proliferation and how B cells replicate, but that didn't have to do with the antigen binding specificity. So we're gonna cross that off. Next, we're gonna jump down here and talk about isotype switching between immunoglobulins. Now, immunoglobulins is another name for antibodies. And so that's a tempting answer. Think about isotype switching. And that is something that does happen as part of the immune response. But when isotype switching happens, we're changing other parts of the antibodies. We're not changing that antigen binding region that actually binds to the antigen. So this answer is going to be incorrect as well. Finally, down here, we have agglutination of antigen bound antibodies. Now that's when antigen specific antibodies clump together in the body. And again, a part of the immune response, yes, 100% but not the part we're interested in because it doesn't have to do with how we're able to bind to so many different antigens in our body. Finally, this last answer, which you've probably guessed by now is the correct one, hypermutation of the variable antigen binding region. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about. We've got this antigen binding region that can change. And because there's hypermutation happening, every time this B cell replicates, this region is going to be slightly different. And that's what's gonna allow for those different colors, if you will, in the diagram. And more importantly, antigen binding regions that can bind to different antigens on each B cell. So that's the answer we want. Let's mark it. If you liked this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course at mcatselfprep.com. And if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with one of our available tutors. We'd love to talk with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we'll see you next time.